All right, welcome back, fifth grade. Uh, at the end of chapter five, we had uh, Hen not Henry, Seth, working with Henry, getting uh, his dream job opportunity, but it didn't turn out as dreamy as uh, he had hoped it would be. He had to uh, work with uh, Henry, who doesn't seem to trust him or is not really giving him much of a chance. Um, we'll see how it goes. And then you got Mr. Farrell, who seems to be nice enough, but isn't so nice to Josiah. Let's find out what happens here in chapter six. Once Henry stopped talking and started working, I could see why Mr. Farrell put up with his thoughtless remarks. He was a good carpenter. We finished the outside stairs and the balustrade that ran up uh, and around the gallery. Then the balustrade is a railing that keeps you from falling out the porch. Uh, then Mr. Farrell put us to trimming windows. When the sun finally sank behind the trees, we packed up our tools and started for home. Henry lived to the east of Avenue Q, not far from Mr. Farrell. Oh, and one note I haven't mentioned yet. In towns where they name the streets letters, it's t a good sign that it was growing so rapidly that they didn't really have time to think of creative names, so they just labeled them Avenue A, B, C, D, E. Mr. Farrell, uh, okay, let's try this again. Avenue Q, not far from Mr. Farrell. So, the two left together. Josiah struck out for the beach, and rather than make a take and my morning route alone, I decided to walk with him. As long strides had taken him three full blocks before I caught up with him. Hope you don't mind the company, I said, breathing hard. No, sir, don't mind. He gave me a quick glance, dropped a half pace behind, then turned his attention back to the ground as he was, uh, the ground he was covering. Are you going far? No, sir, not far. He didn't seem too fond of talking, but I'd admired his work more than uh, once today and told him so. He'd anticipated Mr. Farrell's uh, every move, made quick work of figuring and marking his cuts, and I'd, uh, and I'd never seen anyone saw through boards the way he had. You know, there's no power saws back then. Everything was hand-powered. He listened, then tossed me a look. I couldn't quite decipher. Something kin to puzzlement, or perhaps surprise. It felt, uh, it left me thinking that maybe no one had ever told him just how good a carpenter he was. After several more uh, failed attempts at talking, he walked, we walked in silence. Just before we reached 35th Street, where Uncle Nate lived, Josiah nodded his goodbye and turned down the alley. I slowed, trying to keep my eye on where he was going, but he disappeared quick, leaving me to wonder how close he lived to Uncle Nate. As I passed 35th, I looked long and hard down the street, hoping to catch a glimpse of Ella Rose, the girl with the sunshine hair. But I still had a good walk ahead of me, so I didn't dally. When I got home, I saw Matt, Lucas, and Kate at the Mason's house next door, eating melon with Kearney Jr. I'm sorry, with Kearney Jr. and Francesca. Hey, Matt spit seeds. Did they uh, they sack you yet? Meaning, did they fire you? Oh, they ain't gonna kick Seth off the job, Matt. Lucas grinned at me. He's a uh, uh, almost as good as Papa. Kate dropped her rind and jumped into my arms. Where you been, Seth? She asked, her breath sweet with uh, from the melon. I waited and waited. I pulled her sticky fingers from my neck and let her slide back to the ground. Come on, Kate, I said, ignoring the boys. You need cleaning up. We both washed up out back, and after sending Kate in to Mama, I took the back stairs to the kitchen. Supper was long over, but Mama had left me a plate in the oven. I poured myself a glass of milk, and while I wolfed down my meal, Papa came in with a newspaper tucked under his arm and a cup in his hand. How'd it go? he asked, reaching for the coffee pot at the back of the stove. I swallowed a mouthful of potato. Good, Papa. Very good. And you? He swished the pot, gauging its contents. The same. He managed to fill his cup half full, 
gave me a slight smile and headed back to the parlor to read his paper. Like always, I wondered what was behind his smile. Was he proud that I'd done a man's work today, or just glad that I was saving toward college? It was different for, uh, with Mr. Farrell. Good work, Seth. He'd said, and that wide, gapped grin of his told me that he meant it. I couldn't remember ever hearing Papa say words like that. Not to me, not to any of us. An unexpected bitterness welled in my throat. I swallowed hard, jerked up my dirty dishes, and slid them into the sink. After washing up, I stepped outside onto the East Gallery. In the distance, I heard the lulling sound of surf rolling onto the beach. With a sky so clear, surely there wouldn't be any thunderstorms tonight. I stretched, uh, already feeling the achy tightness that 12 hours uh, labor brings when you're not used to it. Tomorrow, I'd work that soreness out. But I didn't see how I could work away the bitterness inside me if Papa kept adding to it every day. Sounds like Seth needs to go to counseling and figure out his issues with his papa. The three Judson brothers arrived early Wednesday wearing black morning bands around their shirt. Now, morning with a U, meaning I'm sad, like a morning dove sad, morning bands around their shirt sleeves. One glance at a new Frank and Charlie were twins. Same nose, same crooked teeth, same cow look and the identical brown hair. They looked to be about 20, some years younger than their brother. Zachary Judson already had the markings of a working carpenter. The leathery brown skin with the tiny uh, hatch lines that would eventually deepen, like mud cracking under a scorching sun. I'd seen it happen to Papa and knew that it was in my future as well. Mr. Farrell introduced me to the Judson boys, and after I'd offered my condolences, he put me and Josiah to work with Zach. He offered his condolences to the boys. I wonder if you can figure out what that means. I liked Zach right off, and I think Josiah did too. That, uh, the man didn't say much, but when he did... I heard a slow easiness behind his words. I followed on his heels all morning, doing whatever he asked, but always watching. There was something almost mystifying in the way he rested saw and nail against lumber, just for a second, like he was listening, like the wood had whispered something to him I couldn't hear. After our noon meal, I began to notice a connection between the three of us, an invisible rhythm that bound us one to the other. We danced to music only we could hear. One set of hands, a single purpose. So today, his work seems quite uh, much better. He seems to be uh, in a rhythm, he's happy, and he's, it doesn't feel like work if everything you're doing is awesome. Uh, let's see. I was startled later to see the sun sinking below the tree line. Startled as in, what, the day's over? Like chickens picking off June bugs, we'd finished one job after another and the hours had disappeared clean and without notice. I looked back, surprised at what we'd accomplished. I think Mr. Farrell was too. Well, I swan, he said, pushing his straw uh, hat back off his forehead. If you three don't make a dang good team. We walked, he walked off with a grin on his face, shaking his head. Bright and early tomorrow, boys, he hollered over his shoulder. Bright and early. I helped pull, put away the lumber and tools, then said, My goodbyes. Zach nodded uh, and headed north with his brothers. They'd, uh, said that they'd said very little about themselves, but Henry had already told me about their mama passing last summer, and now their daddy was gone too, leaving Zach with eight younger brothers and sisters to worry over. Curious about where he lived, I watched him till he turned east on Avenue P, then hurried after Josiah. He'd already lit out for the beach like yesterday. This time, I didn't talk much, at least not at first. I didn't have any idea where Josiah's thoughts were, 
but mine were a jumble of captured moments that played and replayed in my head. And all of them had to do with Zack and the way he worked. But even so, it wasn't long before I remembered that I still didn't know anything about him. Like yesterday, he'd been uh, keeping a half pace behind me, which made talking difficult. So I slowed down and matched my steps with his. Confusion flickered across his face, and I saw a definite hesitation in his gait, the way he's walking. But he kept to my pace. I was wondering, I said to him, do you live with your parents? No, sir. I lives with my granddaddy. Just the two of you? Yes, sir. Oh, he never raised his eyes to look at me. Well, I noticed that you turned down the alley behind my uncle's house yesterday. Maybe you know him, Nathan Braden? He tossed me uh, a quick glance. Yes, sir. I know m I knows Mr. Braden. My granddaddy works for him. Your grandfather is Ezra? Yes, sir. I grinned at him. I stayed at my uncle's house just the past Friday. Ezra helped us get moved into our rental the next morning. I knows. Sadie was uh, my first work day, or I would have helped. It were uh, Mr. Braden that got me the job. He got me my job. I laughed. He got me my job, too. Josiah never looked me in the eye, but he smiled slightly before he turned down the alley. See you tomorrow, I called. Yes, sir, he called back. I shook my head. No one had ever called me, sir, before, especially not someone my own age. That just didn't sit right. So why do you think Josiah calls Seth, who's pretty much the same age? Why does he call him sir? Why does he never look him in the eye? Why does he not want to walk right next to him? What can we infer about the way that character, uh, Josiah, is thinking? I shot a quick glance down 35th Street, and when I didn't see Ella Rose, I left I let my thoughts turn back to work, back to those frozen moments in my head, back to that, that thing that had passed from Zack right into me. I'd felt it uh, wake something inside me, and I think Josiah did too, a quiet something that had always been waiting in my hands and suspended in my every word. To Papa, today it shot right through me, lightning, light, wait, what does that say? Lighting, lighting me up like the electric current that lit the city, bridging uh, each of us to our work and to one another. Twilight soft one minute, then strong enough to light the whole world the next. I didn't understand it, not a bit of it. But thanks to Zach, I recognized it. I glimpsed it before, this undercurrent that had been sleeping in me ever since I could remember. So... What I think is happening here is there's two things. There's this love of work that's getting him super excited. There's this uh, love of working with others who love uh, what you do just as much. So Henry, he didn't have the love for Henry, so work wasn't, didn't feel quite as good. Here, uh, working with, these, with Zach and Josiah feels you know, like a perfect little harmony. And... Uh, I would even suggest that there's a bit of a bromance going on here, that Seth is just, uh, uh, I'm going to say, just in, in impressed with and just kind of like a manly love for Zach and his awesomeness. All right, moving on. Now, if I could only bring it to life, make it shine in me the way it did in Zach, then Papa would know. He'd see I was a true carpenter and that I could never be anything else. Dun, dun, dun. So, he sees this as his destiny, but how does he convince his father? Stay tuned! Uh.